My biggest political winner for 2023 is MBS, Mohammed bin Salman. I think that Saudi Arabia will have the most important year in kind of the modern era in terms of uh, their role. I don't know if you guys saw this Reuters report from a few weeks ago, but there's kind of a, a deepening discussion about the oil yuan trade in that um, Saudi would sell oil to China and they would get paid in yuan. Saudi Arabia sits at the intersection of the United States, Russia, and China. They have relationships with all three nations. And in the kind of um, conflict and power struggle that is underway, I think that ultimately the direction of where global currency kind of reserves will be taken um, and the importance of these great nations and who sits atop whom can actually be dictated and significantly influenced by MBS this year by some of the deals and trades he might put in place and the, and the, the, the kind of partnerships he might forge. I think as a result, you will see him kind of rise in terms of influence, not in terms of, you know, hey, the world has accolades for this, for this guy. But I think in terms of global influence, uh, he will rocket ship to kind of the top because of this, this kind of uh, jockeying he can now do between these three great nation states um, and defining you know, what's going to happen with the U.S. and what's going to happen with China and what's going to happen great with, selection. with uh, currency reserves. Great, great selection. I mean, primacy. great selection. The, the, shitty, the shitty thing, by the way, about your selection is that Biden, our explicit stance is unfortunately quite confrontational with MBS. And yeah. you saw that play out in Q4. We asked them to ease up on OPEC Plus to introduce supply cuts and they did some nominal 100,000 barrel per day cut didn't do much of anything there was an article to your point freeberg just recently about saudi really doubling down on getting the oil out of the ground and monetizing their petrochemicals so there's just going to be a glut of supply in the market and we have the least amount of influence with saudi arabia than we've ever had and it seems like we could change that if we decided to, but I think Biden has taken this very confrontational approach, which doesn't seem to make and remember, a lot of sense. Their stated intent is to diversify away from oil and into technology and other kind of emerging growth economies. That's why they funded the Vision Fund. That's why MBS made that big kind of visit to Silicon Valley a few years ago. And there is technology that they want to import into Saudi Arabia and they want to have ownership in around the world. And if the US is creating a barrier for them to import US tech, into Saudi or for Saudi to kind of invest in the US, but China and Russia have open arms and all they want is for Saudi to start doing trades in Yuan, it's gonna happen. And I think that's where this guy has um, kind of a real opportunity to shift the global uh, economic dynamic. Say what you will about Trump, he uh, had open dialogue with North Korea, China, Russia, MBS. Keep your enemies close, sure. You want to be able to talk to anybody and he was anybody. able to talk to anybody. Now, you also want to be able to say, hey, listen, you can't dismember a journalist like Khashoggi, and you need to be able to have both of those ideas in your head. You can't be rigid in foreign policy. You have to be fluid and keep people at the table talking. Freeberg, you got a prediction for the biggest business deal of 2023? This is really going out on a limb here. Kind of echoing what I said earlier, which is the petro yuan trade. I think that the Saudi-China trade, if this happens and oil is sold in yuan, it marks the beginning of, I think, the end of the assumption that the US dollar is the global reserve and the risk-free currency in reserve for the world. So I think the petro yuan trade, if you guys, um, here's the Reuters article covering Xi's visit uh, to Saudi Arabia last month, uh, first, second week of December. Once this gets inked and signed, it's a real shift uh, globally. Do you have a contrarian belief for 2023? I think my it follows my earlier points about the Saudi China Russian Russia trade this year exiting 2023 it may be the case that you know there's historically been this belief and this continuing belief that the US dollar will always be the de facto global reserve currency and the current mantra is that it's better than the rest everyone else is worse off than the US western Europe is in trouble Japan is in trouble China is in trouble everyone's in trouble but if there is a coalition, an economic coalition, a, a scaled economic coalition that 
starts to shift the balance of power a little bit. And the U.S., meanwhile, is taking on extraordinary debt load, spending $1.7 trillion in an omnibus bill, you know, has this massive unfunded social security problem coming down the pipe and are trying to manage multiple funded conflicts around the world. It could be that the U.S. dollar coming out of 2023 starts to trade more like a risk asset and less like a risk-free asset. And so I think that that's my big contrarian bet is that maybe this year marks the beginning of the end of the U.S. dollar as the kind of global de facto reserve currency based on some of these big trades that I talked about happening. Unbelievable. Um, So that that would be my my big kind of contrarian. Perfectly said. Uh, That's your contrarian bet. The the legion of dictators, the MBSs, et cetera, they become, they form a new global currency. Yeah. My term, not yours. Yeah, I'm not calling it. A, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't say a legion of dictators, and I wouldn't say form a new global currency. But I, I do think that the fact that that large economic trading models start to be done in non-dollar denominated form, got it. You know, weakens the uh, the kind of reserve status of the dollar to some degree, not fully, right? It doesn't happen in a binary mm-hmm. way, and then the dollar starts to trade more like a risk asset, like other currencies do to some degree, not fully. So maybe maybe Once this again, is the year we start to see that shift. 